Welcome to your snowcat as you begin your journey through Antarctica. In the interest of your safety and the safety of those around you, please adhere to the following directions. Please do not attempt to leave your snowcat at any time until the attendant directs you to do so. Please hold on to the handrails provided as this ride will travel across bumpy and sometimes difficult terrain. In the case of an emergency, please await the instructions of the attendant as they're well trained and will be on hand to assist you. And please turn off the flash on your camera so as not to disturb our penguins. Whiteout conditions such as you're experiencing now are common in Antarctica. They're caused by a combination of strong winds and ice. The disorientation and extreme cold mean that your only option is to stay in one place. These are the conditions in which Captain Scott and his companions spent their final days. Confined inside their tent, they ran out of food only one day's walk from the next supply depot. them swimming, you'll see that their movements are those of flying, only in water instead of air. They use their powerful wings to propel themselves and their feet and tail to steer. Some penguins can dive to depths of over 400 meters. Gen 2s are the smaller black and white variety. Both are common around the Subantarctic Islands. Our penguin enclosure simulates the Subantarctic in both lighting and temperature, and we produce up to three tons of snow every day. The penguins are fed mainly herrings, sprats, salmon, and squid. Swimming in extremely cold temperatures means that waterproofing is essential to prevent water penetrating through to the penguin's skin. When on land, Penguins spend a great deal of time preening, spreading a waterproofing oil produced in the gland at the base of their tail all over their feathers. They're kept warm by a layer of fat or blubber and by dense and numerous feathers up to 30 per square centimetre more than any other bird. Penguin feathers wear out after about a year, so must be replaced. This process is called molting. Unlike other birds, penguins must molt all their feathers at once in order to remain waterproof. Penguins cannot swim and therefore cannot feed during the molt. They gorge themselves prior to molting and then rely on their layer of blubber for nourishment as they molt. As a result, they may lose between 20 and 30 percent of body weight during this period. The entire process can take four to six weeks. Enriching the environment in zoos improves and enhances animals' living spaces. It stimulates them to investigate and interact with their surroundings. To achieve this, we make regular changes within their enclosure. This is done by building large snow mounds, tunnels, and even the occasional snowman. We also present novel objects such as soccer balls and frisbees for them to investigate and explore. 
We're constantly changing how we present food to them by varying feeding times, quantities, types of food, and where they're fed. Doing all of this gives penguins more choice of activity and draws out their natural behaviors and abilities, therefore enhancing animal welfare. Penguins are social animals. They travel, feed, breed, nest, and winter in large groups. This colony is home to around 80 birds. In the wild, colonies can number in the millions. Males and females have slight physical differences. Males are generally larger and have longer beaks than females. To assist the bird curation team at Kelly Tarleton's, our penguins each have a colored band around one of their wings. This way, we can monitor the health and keep a feeding record for each particular bird. At the edge of the frozen sea, many penguins and sea mammals gather, taking advantage of the rich waters. Penguins feed on shrimp-like krill, as well as squid and fish. Penguins are in turn hunted by leopard seals. But the ultimate predator in Antarctic waters is the orca, from which not even the much-feared leopard seals are safe. 